One of the most useless categories of supplements. One of the biggest wastes of money and time are thermogenic fat burners. Fat burners. Fat burner. The best fat burners for men. They don't burn body fat. They do nothing for you except maybe have a stimulant effect, which gives you a little bit of energy, but they don't burn body fat at all. So if you're buying fat burners, take your money, light it on fire. It's the same thing. It's interesting they can, can even get away with naming it that, no? I know. Thermogenic. Because uh, they raise core temperature. Are you getting hot? That's what it says. Yeah. Is that That's what, what they say. Yeah. Mm. Like what, about, what about the ones that have nothing to even do with that? Like if it doesn't even have a stimulant in it. Like remember like uh, uh, lipotropic transport or pyruvate? Oh my, oh my gosh. <laughs> lipotropic. Yeah, you remember all those? I do. I do. I do. So I those, weren't even, those weren't even thermogenic. Those weren't even anything no. that was speeding your metabolism up or uh, yeah. didn't have caffeine, nothing no. in it. So it's like- Nothing. And it's like just takes your fat in a bus and then like and like moves it somewhere else. Oh yeah, that's how you we know? were told. Yeah, to sell it. Was, and the most yeah. effective, best ones that were ever created, like the hydroxy cuts and the xenadrens and all those like that, were ephedra and caffeine based. Yeah, and that was really the effectiveness of it. It wasn't that it, there was some you know magical thing inside this supplement that was burning fat. It was just no, like it, it was an have you ever taken present. six cups of coffee before and then act, see how you act? <laughs> yeah. It's like literally it's like well so I'm so they did calories. another yeah. they did another big analysis. By the way, there's a lot of these studies now on these these quote unquote thermogenic fat burners, but they did another one and they found that they don't burn more body fat. They don't do anything with nutrient repartitioning. This is how they'll also sell it. They don't they don't do anything. Uh but what they can do in some people is suppress appetite for a short period of time. So people who say, but I use those and I did lose more weight, it's the appetite suppressing effects of the stimulants. Now, there is a, another side to that, which is the appetite suppressing effects wore off very quickly, the body adapts, and then you're in a crappy position. Because what happens is when you go off the stimulants, now because your body's down-regulated receptors and adjusted to this stimulant, when you go off of them, you are below baseline Appetite comes way back and you feel like garbage for like a week. It's like, okay, stop drinking coffee all of a sudden. You feel like crap for a week. It's far worse with these thermogenic fat burners that have other stimulants on top of caffeine. So waste the money. I, unless you want to take it as a pre-workout, give you a little bit of hype or whatever, or you just like to feel yeah. overstimulated, you know, I'll raise my hand. What's um, Waste the money. Is it What's the percentage that they usually allot for for the placebo effect? That's a good question. That's a very good question. I don't know. Yeah, because I know that they have to account for that, and yeah. it's and it obviously it like amounts to the person's actual belief, uh, which does play into that on some level. But I mean, you could just have like a sugar pill, and we actually talked about this with with somebody that called in that was like kind of taking them. And oh, it's like yeah. a ritualistic kind of a thing that led to kind of better behaviors. But I mean, it's literally nothing of what they're actually promoting in the ads or uh, the effect of it. That's probably one of the most, you know, it'd be interesting to see what the percentage to your point, but that's actually one of the things I used to tell clients that, hey, if you, one, if you have the disposable income, Two, if you're like a Sal, where you like experimenting and, and noticing how different things make you make you feel. Three, does it help you stay accountable to doing the other things, right? Like I, I do remember at a point in my life when, uh, you know, 200 and something bucks a month in supplements was a lot of money to me. Like mm -hmm. it was a good percentage of what I made for the month. And so it was like, if I'm spending this money on these protein powders, yeah. these fat Can't burners, these it. muscle builders, like I was also going to the gym. Right. So there was that kind of like, oh, and there was this like, that was like the first step we would back, back then it was max muscle, right? Oh, let's go down to the max muscle and find out the, the, the latest, you know, that's where I used to buy my, uh, my over the counter. Yeah. Pro steroids. hormone stuff that we could <laughs> yeah. get, right? Pro, yeah. They had pro all hormone. aggressive yeah. packaging. No, no, no. They were hormones. Yeah. <laughs> they weren't pro And hormones. then, and then we get him and then, and then like, again, then I would become consistent. And so that's kind of how I present it to clients is that, okay. One, it's not a big deal for you to throw away two or three hundred dollars. Uh, two, you enjoy feeling different from these things, and three, it's like you recognize that it makes more sense. Now, if you don't check those boxes, then it is an absolute waste. There's also you're, there's also something that you're not including there, which is what could you spend that money on? Sure, that would give you a, a greater return. Sure, and I could name a lot of things that you could spend two hundred dollars on that would give you greater return. Oh, yeah. One of them being put it in the stock market, you know, you don't have to yeah. do anything uh, with that $200 that's related to fitness. That would, and it would still be a better return than what you're spending. In fact, I'm wonder, 
maybe Doug can look this up or Andrew. Uh, how much money do people spend on personal trainers every year versus how much money people spend on supplements every year? I want to see what the difference is in those numbers. Yeah, I'd be very. I'm very interested to see if there's. It might be f hard to find the individual. You can find what the markets are, though. You could see what the supplement industry is worth, and you can see what the personal training market is. Yeah, worth. I mean, I guess that would be the, mm -hmm. the closest, right? Yeah. What do you guys think? Which I ones? Mean, which ones value more? Oh my god, it's not even. It won't even be close. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do you see there, just, Doug? Well, it says sixty percent of the population spends more than forty dollars a month on supplements. Um, 13% over $100 per month. I mean, you could just look at what the total industry is. Yeah, right? look so at what's the, what the, is the value of the supplement? Like how much how much how many billions of dollars do we do we do in supplements per year and then how much do we do in personal training per yeah, year? Yeah, because it's not even in the same. Because let's say you do universe. spend let's say you do spend 100 bucks a month on on fat burners, okay? If you did one session a month with a personal trainer, you would get way more yeah. In return. Sure. Yeah. With especially that with, money. Especially with a good coach. For fat loss, for muscle building, for performance enhancement. Your for workouts everything. would be more efficient. Your nutrition so would be more dialed in. 35.6 billion in 2022. For supplements. 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 Yeah. And then I, let's look at the personal. The other answer. one's probably maybe in the hundreds of millions. Maybe. If oh that. my God. That just goes to show you. Yeah, it's not even the same universe. Yeah. Holy cow. If that's true, how powerful is marketing, right? Because- Mark the the industry because it's funded by supplements. Uh, your the the view is so distorted on its effectiveness. So the average consumer spends more on supplements than they would on hiring a coach, mm -hmm. which is the opposite of of what you should do. Absolute opposite. I'm interested to see that number. Yeah, it may be hard to find because okay. I don't think there's any good stats. What are yeah? What are you searching for, Andrew? Is this you pulling up? I got something here. It's personal fitness trainer market size grown strongly in recent years. It's basically about forty one billion. Okay, so it's comparable. Mm. Comparable. Mm. But this is that's for the trainer personal trainer. Size. I don't know if it's like personal trainers getting paid or people spending on personal trainers. That's got to be what they spent. But that's okay. So it's comparable. Um, but I, a larger percentage of the population buys supplements than than works with trainers. And remember, training is expensive and compared to suppl uh, supplements. Yeah, yeah. I'm still so, surprised by that. Nonetheless, number. I mean, I'm uh, trying to do, I'm trying to run the, yeah. the numbers in my head real quick with uh, 24 hour fitness. You have say you have you have 400 locations. The average location is on at the high end doing a million a year. So it's that's 400 million from that from that location mm -hmm. from that, and that's one of the largest chains. So 10x that maybe? Yeah. Yeah. And most know. all people who are buying personal training are usually buying supplements. So there's like a crossover between the two. Oh. Yeah. That was always the struggle that I had. Um, Regardless, working. I get your point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah my point is this, that you're, you're, um, you're spending a lot. People are spending money on things that do nothing for them. Yeah. And even, if they took that money and put it towards a code. Well, I also think there's other things that like, this is, a, uh, here's one. Um, and this, here's an expensive one. Uh, something like the eight sleep. Okay, it's not a cheap product. Sure. But what that has done just for my sleep or any of my clients that have purchased uh, one of these, like either them or the other companies that exist out there, uh, and what we know about sleep when it comes to recovery and building muscle and burning body fat and just overall, like, and it's a one-time purchase. So you mm -hmm. purchase that one time. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's probably what a year's worth of supplement buying would be for you. Mm -hmm. But it's you're, you now forever have it. And now it's impacting something that has far more return on whatever your fitness goals are. So to me, it's like when I look at that, like the trainer comparison, like I get it at that, that point, but it's like, there's other things that you can invest in that well, I think give you a great it's a huge one. Oh, well, speaking to that, there was a study that was done. I talked about this already. This was in the University of Chicago. This was a sleep research laboratory. So this was controlled. So people were in their lab sleeping for either five and a half hours or for a full night of sleep, which was eight hours. Okay. And this was over the course of uh, two weeks, 14 days. You know what they found in 14 days? Mm. And they put them on calorie restricted diet. Just 14 days. They lost the same amount of weight, but the group that slept five and a half hours lost 50% more muscle 
and 50% less body fat. Perfect example. Wow. Just from sleep, same, Just everything else was controlled. the only factor. Everything else was controlled. <laughs> Just sleep, so they lost. So spend money on improving your sleep. So, That's so. So yeah. figure that out. Okay, so just based off of that, if if a product like that just improved your sleep by 10%. Oh, yeah, do that over years or yeah. a year or whatever. Yeah. yeah. It may, not only makes up for And it, a fat burner ain't going to increase your fat loss by 10%. No, no. <laughs> so zero yeah, it, it's, I mean, it's just an example though of, of great marketing. We've done yeah. such a good job in that space. Now, I want to believe the reason why companies like 8Sleep have, do exist now and that the, the, there is a market for it is because the market is shifting. It's more people are becoming more educated. I mean, I remember when we first had Sean Stevenson on the show way back in the days after his first sleep book and everything. Like he was like, I remember one of the things that he said when we had him on, this was like what, eight years ago? What a long time ago. Yeah, at least, at least for, seven years ago. Yeah, seven, eight years ago. Uh he one of the reasons why he wrote that was because there was very few books written on sleep. Like yeah. it just wasn't a popular yeah. conversation. Yet he knew he he knew from experience and what he had done research wise, like what a game changer that can be for people's results. And so I do think the conversation is changing and maybe more people are becoming privy to the 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 value of putting energy and focus around getting better sleep than buying all these, you know, yeah. latest, greatest fat burners or muscle. Yeah, builders. you're hitting a nerve on me with sleep because my sleep's been <laughs> it's been bad <laughs> the past couple nights because of my my one year old who, you know, she she pipes up at two AM and then again at four AM and it's hard to get back to sleep. And I tell you, man, this morning I woke up and I was so tired. You get so tired that you're just like- Delirious? No, well, I, I literally texted my wife. I said, I don't want to be a dad right now. I don't want to be a dad anymore. I think, <laughs> I think I'm done. I, 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 you know, I'm uncool. Yeah. I, think I just want to go to bed. Just retire. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, because I, I just, terrible because she woke me up at 2 a.m. And then from there, has this ever happened to you where you wake up and then you end up waking up every two hours or so? Because now I'm thinking about- which, why did she cry? Maybe you're like anticipating it now. Instead yeah, of, dude. All <laughs> night. Reacting. Oh, yeah. and I woke up. I was so exhausted. Then I come downstairs and my three-year-old is the most, uh, he's like an alarm clock. He wakes up 6 a.m. No matter what. No matter what, he's up at 6 a.m. Yeah. So I go downstairs and, because then I, I fed my daughter and I go downstairs and I lay on the couch and I'm like, I looked at the, you know, my watch. I'm like, okay, 5.45 you know, maybe he'll sleep till 6.30 and I'll get a bit of, nope, sure yeah. enough. As soon as I start drifting off, you know, he comes up next to me, pokes me in the leg. Papa. Oh. <laughs> oh, come on, buddy. Today's giveaway, Maps Split. If you want to enter to win, leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, only two days left for this month's sale. Maps Anabolic and Maps Anabolic Advanced, both 50% off. You have 48 hours left for this sale. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. I've been having a lot of the same issues, and it was it's mainly because we've been traveling a lot for the kids' competitions, and you know, I've been in these hotel rooms that are, you know, it's just like the difference of an environment, and then also too, like my youngest is in science camp this week, and like I don't know what it is, but whenever there's like somebody in the family or the the unit isn't, you know, the unit that night, I'm like, I just have this like anxiety that just happens. Restless. Yeah, I'm just restless. I just oh. like wake up like, ah, and I'm like, why am I awake? I have no idea why I'm awake. Oh, and it's it just worst. keeps happening. That's yeah. the worst, dude. Do you ever do the, do you ever do NyQuil? You ever take NyQuil? It's such <laughs> it's just, a bad thing I to did take. That last night, dude. <laughs> that's such a bad thing to take. <laughs> just, <laughs> that's like the lights out reset, dude. <laughs> oh you you God. take NyQuil, you wake up with a beard. It doesn't like, work yeah, like I want it to ever. <laughs> no, you, you know, wake up, you feel like garbage. No, you don't get like deep sleep. Oh, messed up your liver out. with all that acetaminophen. <laughs> the worst. <laughs> That's the first thing. I remember when oh, I took groggy. The, I remember when I was sick and I was in my 20s. I was like the magic right there. Oh, I'll take this and sleep all day. Oh, my God. Totally I don't fine. know if I've ever taken NyQuil when I'm not sick. I think that's, although, wait, wait, wait. What? Yeah, <laughs> when do you think, take it? I don't think. No, I'm saying when I'm not sick. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, Like yeah, you guys yeah. are saying just take it when you're not sick. Oh, you're, yeah. I don't think I've ever taken it when I'm not sick. Oh, it's terrible. My son's sick right now. He just got, he oh, poor puked buddy. all over me yesterday. Oh, like, on you? Yes. At like, home or Just car? straight. We were in the bath together. And he j we're, he's like he playing. He in the bathtub? Yeah, bro. Oh. Never, he literally, <laughs> oh. he literally like, he's standing up in the bathtub oh, no. and, he's, and we're, we're, you know, his thing is making we poison, right? So he's, we mix, I mix all the different shampoos and stuff. And he's just, this is his thing he likes to do. And he's like stirring it up and he, he looks at it. And then he looks at me and he, and he kind of tilts his head and I can just say, what's wrong, buddy? And he, 
blah, oh, just God. all over me, all in the water. And I'm just now, do you at that point, do you kind of like Katrina? Oh, you, I don't even react. You just chill. Yeah, I just, I just get it out, man. Get it out. And he did, and I'm like, look, it's like floating in the water. Oh, yeah. It's all floating. <laughs> and then, yeah, <laughs> Katrina comes around the corner, and she's like, oh, it's okay, baby. Yeah. Get it all out. Get it all out. And I told you, like, we've been so consistent with throwing up. So he doesn't mm -hmm. like cry or nothing. He yeah. just. Standing there, and you can talk well, to cause him because you guys are chill about it. Yeah, so you yeah, can talk yeah. to him while he's in the middle of it, and you're like, "Do you have any more?" Yeah, there's some more. Okay, we'll, just, we'll get, it out. get it out. Yeah, and so then, oh, I, then I just guy. then I switched over to the shower and rinsed off, yeah. and then brought him in there. But yeah, he was up all night. What What is it about kids having no warning before they throw up? Like as an adult, you know for a little while. Yeah, it's like, they always look so surprised. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, you, I, like, I yeah. would have a not. What I should. And Katrina and I are talking about this. Like he, he's so. Um, his behavior is so consistent that we should know better. And we both had the same like realization afterwards. Like you know what, we should have known he was off because she picked him up from school yesterday, and it's so unlike him to be alone. So he was like sitting by a tree all by himself, which was not like him. Katrina said it was the saddest thing ever. She walked up and he looked up and made eye contact and instantly started crying. And he he loved school and he's always good at school. Like we didn't. And so he was crying because I guess at uh, at the the previous recess. He had, he's all into collecting rocks right now. So he takes all these rocks and he puts them in his pockets. And I guess they came back to uh, class and, you know, they have schedule and it's like discovery time that they're doing. And like my son's pulling all these rocks in class out of his, out of his, on the floor. And all the other kids start playing with them and so that. So it's distracting the whole class. <laughs> so the teacher, of course, like scooped them all up yeah. and said, no, Max, you can't have these in the class. Like we're going to, I'm going to put them outside. And so he was like all upset about it. Then when he went outside, he couldn't find them. So he was all distraught, right? But that's still not like him to be that way where he cries and is by himself, but unless he's not feeling well. When he's not feeling well is when his behavior is off. And it didn't even register Katrina and I, and that was like the first sign of it. Or, he doesn't act sick. He just acts kind of yeah, like- Yeah, he just acts, you know, a little whiny or like emotional, you yeah, know, yeah, needy. Yeah. You know, he'll want to be attached to Katrina uh -huh. or I a lot. And I, right in th that day, so she picks up for school. That was the first sign. Then she's trying to, or we're both like, I'm washing, I'm washing one of the cars and I'm trying to work out and this, and she's doing, and she's trying to work out too. And I see her like coming in the gym and she's like, ah. He won't let me go. He just wants to be by my side all the time. Again, still not that's, registering. That's, yeah. Still my not. kids like that. Yeah, still not registering. Clingy. clingy yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. needy, not like himself. And so still unregistered. We're in the bathtub. Him and I are playing like normal. I still think he's okay. And then, of course, just out of the blue like that. But there was those other signs that it was like, oh, and he didn't eat. And he passed on eating dinner. Okay. So I should have known there, oh, too. Like, all the checks. Yeah, yeah. So we had like all the warning signs. But again, he seemed so normal outside of those behaviors that was like maybe he's fine <laughs> then no he wasn't did, did i ever tell you guys when uh when jessica went she was she got into painting uh rocks mm -hmm. like smooth rocks and she'd paint like really nice she's really good at, at doing it but i remember she's i for she did like six of them and i'm like where are you getting these rocks from she's like oh i'm just outside i'm like honey you know those like people buy rocks to put them in their front yard she's like what do you mean it's just just nature. I'm like, no, that's not nature. People put rocks. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to people's houses and taking rocks yeah, from their yard? She's like, what? I'm like, yeah, dude. I think you're stealing people's rocks. Like, yeah. <laughs> she had no idea. She thought it was like nature. I'm like, no, well, you know, it's funny. The woods. <laughs> you know, it's funny about that. It's in her defense, like, if you grew up in the country, it is like that. If you grow up in the city, it is like yeah. what you're saying. Like in the city, you don't have those things. These are like small, like smooth decorative. I remember when we were when we were kids, we, yeah. where we grew up, River uh, Rocks from Home Depot for a portion of our life we lived <laughs> exactly. up near um lake don pedro up 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 north a little bit or northeast a little bit um and what's out there like crazy is limestone rocks oh. everywhere with the moss all grown on it and i never knew this until i got older but we had it all and we were this is when we were poor right didn't have a lot of shit and we had this property that had all this rock and i remember later on in life like finding out like people pay like thousands of dollars for these rocks that have all that limestone moss grown on it. Like, You're like be, I got them for free. Okay. Oh, they were, we, I mean, looking back now, I'm like, dude, I would have just stored a couple truckloads of that. Yeah. We would have had tens of thousands well, bro, of dollars. Well, bro, when I was- mine your back. My, yeah. dad, my dad thinks it's the funniest thing. You're wearing a pair of jeans right now with holes in them. My dad thinks it's the funniest thing in the world. Dude, he goes, uh, when I was a kid, we used to patch up the holes in our jeans. Now you guys get them on purpose and go spend yeah. a lot of money on them. Yeah, yeah. Like I, was, I was doing the day in the life today and somebody was like, uh, you know, do we need to start like, I don't know, funding you guys just to get Adam a new pair of pants? <laughs> like, I, I don't know. It's uh, kind of his thing. Hey, uh, when did you know, when did you figure out, because you say you grew up poor, right? And, yeah. Like, was there a moment where you were like, oh, I, you know, this behavior I never would have done before, but now 
I do because I'm, you know, I'm much better off. Oh, like you mean there's like, like I'll tell you one for us, right? At home, right? It's like I tease my wife about this. I'm like, oh, you're rich lady now. So we buy sliced bread. Okay. Yeah. yeah. She doesn't eat the ends of the bread. Just throws the heels away. She throws the the ends of the bread away. Oh, yeah. I'm like, oh, whoa, we're so rich now. You just throw away the ends of the bread. (laughs) Yeah. 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 You save those for the ducks. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Oh. That's the that's what you that's do. Smooth, you feed the ducks. Bro. I'm telling you. That's right. Yeah, yeah. take the kids down to the to get down to the pond and do that. That's, that's, a, great idea. that's a great. That's a great. Because I don't do. like the heels either. But, you know yeah. what? So okay, going back to like port. You know what we used to do with the heels in our family to stretch out the how big your tuna was. My mom would slice the heels up and add it into the tuna mix. So that would, she'd cut the tuna. So it would. Oh. Du- <laughs> so yes, she would. She would cut the tuna. Like so a drug dealer? it would double the volume <laughs> wow. of the. Yeah, that was like. A, wow. There's a poor hack volume for you right there. Right there. Yeah, she used to do an egg salad sandwiches. She used to do it in tuna. I mean, that's like breadcrumbs, I guess, right? Yeah. So yeah. that's what she do. She'd slice them all up and. Wasn't croutons is just old bread? That's yeah. yeah. So you know that's a thing in restaurants, right? Yeah. People know this. Just, they just let the bread rolls uh, get old. A lot of people don't know this. Restaurants. Yeah. I don't think all restaurants do, but a lot of restaurants do this. The bread that people don't eat at the table. They take it back. This and they is turn like a croutons. whole other world of what people don't want to know. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Trust me, I worked in the restaurant industry. Yeah. I, seen some I mean, they cook it. I guess it's okay, yeah. right? Like the reuse of food that you've seen. Like, dude. like I saw that in another dish, and now this is in like a soup. Yeah. <laughs> oh. What's happening here? I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what some of my 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 bad habits like that uh, that have happened. I mean, I I try and I'm I try to be aware of that stuff because it it bothers me when I catch myself doing stuff like that. Like mm-hmm. I don't like that. Like I don't. Don't, I get really irritated. There's two things that we do right now that I that really bothers me. That I'm in, and I'm part of this, right? So it's not me ragging on my wife. Like we both do this. Is like one we uh, use DoorDash and delivery services way too fucking much. Like the whole COVID thing made us so comfortable oh, with right. that. That I made can, the stock go up ten dollars myself. Yeah, yeah, and so it's just it's just wasteful, and it's so easy in the moment to be like, oh, it's an extra five dollars. What cares? Yeah, you know, but but yeah. I mean, you multiply that multiple times a day throughout months. Like yeah. it's just it's just stupid. The other thing we do too is we keep we still even though I have a filter at my house or a, a, a Alhambra bottle thing or whatever you call it, um, we still when when that runs out, if one of us didn't go run to go fill all the five gallon jugs up, then we order plastic water bottles. And I don't want to be drinking out of plastic water bottles, yeah. and it's so wasteful. Yeah. It's, it's saying, and so we do that, and it's just like so we order. We I have it delivered to my door, and they're gl- big. The big five. I gallon, saw the and glass, glass. I seen them. They're glass. I got glass on purpose when I read that. Remember, we talked about the show a while ago, mm, where yeah. they found so many plastics. Oh, millions yeah. of bits of nanoparticles of plastic so in alarming. water in, that comes in in plastic bottles. So they make just new, from the process. So they make right. the new the new ones. The so I have a BP free one now. That's that, that, that they, it's they, still they, the bits of plastic in it. It's uh, just yeah, from sure. the processing. Yeah, because sure you think something. of the factory that puts the water in, sure. puts the cap on. Sure, sure. It's like dust. Yeah, and it ends up in the water. Yeah, I mean that we're again. It's an area where I we could be better. Like I'm I'm terrible about doing that so it's wasteful you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. so when we have things like that that are like super wasteful and and mm-hmm. you know you get to a point like you're saying like you're oh what are we so rich now we don't worry about five Dude. bucks here ten bucks there it's like, <laughs> yeah we're, we, had, we had we bought like three waffle makers because the other ones got like dirty and you couldn't clean it good enough so just bought a new one she's like yeah. it's only 20 something bucks do you so like, babe <laughs> but then again i hold on i gotta i gotta add to it she'll sell shit on uh what is that that's see i Mark appreciate Posh mark I yeah love, dude yeah. someone will show up on my door and be like oh Courtney i'm here to buy the, the time and i'm like yeah, the coffee all table thing for 12 bucks. Like, I'm bring see i love time. that your guys' wives do that because i wish katrina would do that more now in her defense though we did ha- and i know this is part of why she doesn't is because we've had two cars stolen from our house and both times was after we did like of having people come wait a minute yeah, i thought case when you guys place. were together yeah Wow. I don't know that happened when you guys. Yeah, were yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, shit, it's been thirteen years been together. So yeah, I've had two cars stolen, and it was at right after we had like a garage sale where we had people coming to our house. Yeah. How do they steal a car? I got to understand. Hotwire it? Is that a thing still? I mean, the it's not that hard. The, the vehicle one was an Integra, the other one was the the Chevy truck, and they. I remember when the cop told me how easy the Chevy trucks are. They just pop the door handle. They go right in and then, yeah. Yeah, but how do they turn it on and get it? Yeah, I think, get, I think you could like stick a screwdriver. I mean, I don't know. I haven't stolen any cars lately. So I don't know. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> exactly. This. Just watch a YouTube video yeah, now. Yeah. It's like, I guarantee there's a YouTube video. Yeah. I've never, never, a car? Yes. 
Remember when I told you guys that about my safe? I'll did. never forget that. That you was like the, me. that was the funniest thing that had ever happened to me. I think when it comes to like security and safety and all this other that, I had this at home safe that I had all bolted down and shit like that. I used to keep all you know money and pri all the stuff that in there. You obviously don't want to get it right. And it was one of those digital code ones, and the battery died on it, and I didn't have the backup key, and I couldn't find it, and I was like. Fuck, you're so screwed. So and I and for days I was like, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Like, am I gonna rip this thing off the wall? And like, what's gonna happen? Yeah. Like, and then I was like, you know what? I wonder if someone's ever had this problem. Let me YouTube it. And I YouTube it, motherfucker showed how to break into that thing with a paper, <laughs> with a paper clip in less than three minutes. And I watched the tutorial with a paper clip, with a paper clip dog. And I did it. And it like it took me literally like two tries. Dude, that's so alarming. And I know. And I'm like, what's the point of this safe if you could wow. YouTube? You're like, all you had to do, I literally looked at the brand, uh, you know, locked myself out of this safe or like that. And a guy had That's a all how you have to title it is like helping you get back into your own safe. Right? Yes. But like, you wow. know, now I know how to break it in everybody's yeah, right. safe. Car won't start. Chevy yeah. 2024 yeah, yeah, yeah. Won't, won't start. start. Yeah. Yeah. How do I get this? Yeah, thing? lost my keys. What do I do? Yeah, I lost my keys and I'm <laughs> yeah, stranded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yes, bro. Wow. So there's like all that stuff. I'll never forget that. I was like, that's, oh, that's hilarious. That's hilarious. What's the point of all this? I gotta stuff? I gotta bring up a uh, an article um that backs up the theory theory that uh, I have that they, that they quote unquote, I know you hate that when I say that, Adam, that they want us to be unhealthy. Have you guys uh, seen this new article that's going around talking about how I got to pull up here, talking about how I got to read the, the, the title because that's the best part. Um, here it is. Ready? It's in the Daily Mail based off of a study. Okay. Sunbathing for just one day. This is the title increases your risk of heart disease and stops the body fighting infections. What? Study finds. Yeah. So maybe you could pull this article up, Doug, but I'll tell you, I read it. I read the study. So first off, it's the most misleading. Who put this out? Daily Mail. It's the most misleading um, title of all time. Here's what they found. Wow. When people were out in the sun all day, certain inflammatory markers were elevated by 10%. Okay. Okay. By the way, that's what happens when you work out. Do you know? Yeah. Yes. Okay. One of the reasons why your body tans when you're out in the sun, it adapts to the stress. It's adapting to the stress, yeah. and the stress process is inflammation. Yeah. You do get a rise in inflammatory, just like working out. Just but if you were to take somebody through an appropriate workout, a proper workout, test their blood before and after, you would see elevated uh, inflammatory markers, elevated markers of stress, and then what you could say is. Oh my God, this actually is going to make people sick because these markers are also connected to things like cancer, heart disease, and so on. Terrible, right? So I read, so, and now how many people actually understand that? Nobody. Yeah. Yeah. They see this article and all they see that stupid title and then they're like, oh my God, please stay inside. Another example though of like, why? Like why, why, why are we, why is someone putting together that? Or why would you present that information? Oh, to your point, this is, this is your, this is my theory. Yeah, your theory is they, I think so. sick. I think so, dude. I think that there's this this strange. It only that's the only thing that makes sense. That's why I think so because I don't know anything uh, you know about what's happening. But I it only the only thing that makes sense to me is that that they've identified that all these 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 controlling powers have identified that when people are less empowered, obese, um, when they're not exercising, when they're more sick, they're more valuable to all these markets and they're easier to control and to manipulate. And when people feel healthy, fit, empowered, or not on lots of medications, whatever, then they're just not as valuable. The purchasing habits are different and they're harder to manipulate. So it's, that's the only thing that makes sense to me because when I read these articles, I'm like, this is, what are you guys saying? This is crazy. Absolutely crazy. Terrible yeah. advice. How I else are you going to get us to adopt the social credit score? Oh, man. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> you got to start there. Yeah, oh. dude. That man, that's that, I'm in China, I didn't know this, that they... Their um their their cameras don't just identify your face; they also identify your gait and movement. Mm -hmm. So if you cover you your face up, yeah, they still can figure it out. They can still figure. And did you know that I didn't know this that you'll your bank account will get there's no court right. So if it catch the cameras catch you, it's automated. You gotta Boom, learn money that. taken from your account. Yeah, and your social credit score. I mean, goes this, down. this you gotta is learn that dune walk <laughs> to the shuffle. That oh, you yeah. <laughs> Just figure they can't it out. Identify. I yeah. mean, this is what scares me the most about like cryptocurrency and stuff like that that everybody's so pro about is that what happens when we have this this digital 
digital coin that it's so easy for the government to to grab and move and stuff like that. And it's so it's so present it's presented like this is like the safer place. Mm. And it's like, no, it's not gonna be. If if you if everything's done digitally, it's gonna be so much easier to track every single thing that you do. Well, well that they're bill are just freezing your accounts, all yeah. of them. Well that there's that there's like, they've that. already shown they've done that. You they know, did in Canada and like all these other places. Like they can do that. They can. They they the that bill for TikTok is basically a bill that will allow the executive branch the power um, out of discretion, essentially, to censor, control, or shut down social media sites. But of course, they're using TikTok as the, you know, whatever. It's the you want Trojan to call it. horse. Yeah, the scapegoat or whatever, right? And I'm not a big TikTok fan. In fact, I think. No, I. Yeah, uh, yeah I think either. that there, there's a problem there. But I think it should be specific to TikTok and not like these broad sweeping powers. To Do you work. know where that? Where is that at? That's. I mean, we brought that up the other day. Like, is it? How long does it take before they pass? Or, oh, you don't know how long uh -uh. it takes to do that. No, no, no. I haven't seen too many people that have been pointing it out either, which is a little uh, uh, makes me nervous. You know, I see more people uh, hating on TikTok, which I think we all are all in agreement on that. But the answer is not to go through the the ban that they're trying. It's to just do. What, what it's interesting because. Um, you could be specific and say, TikTok, this is the one we have a problem with. But instead, what the legislation does is it gives mm -hmm. broad powers. So, and this is this is not the first time, by the way. This is what they did. I mean, they do this after every emergency. September 11th, well, they did this, right? Where they, they're like, oh, we got to stop terrorists. But then what they do is they give broad discretionary powers without judge, trial, or jury to uh, you know elements of the government under the guise of protecting us against terrorists, but it, but it has yeah. been used against citizens. So yeah. I, I'm sure there's a lot of language in there that, um, cause you kind of saw the reaction of the government on some level of like, they lost control of uh, Twitter. And so now it's like, you know, how can we can reconfigure this in a way that benefits mm -hmm. us so we can kind of backdoor it again. And it's, I don't know. I just, that's where I'm always thinking cause it's already been shown that that was proven to be the case yeah. did you see ron paul's interview with um oh, what's his name on on x i can't i can't believe i forgot his name uh used to be on fox tucker carlson thank you did you see he interviewed ron paul mm -mm. Mm -mm. and he asked ron paul when did this all go south like when did we lose all this and he says this assassination of jfk Mm -hmm. He said, "At that moment, that's when everything in went. broad daylight." You still, you still haven't watched uh, Octopus Murders, have you? No. Oh yeah. He goes into that too, huh? That's where we finally got Adam on board. <laughs> yeah. Come on, guy. I brought my tinfoil hat, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, okay. I'll yeah. add one more before this conversation uh, ends. Uh, so, did you hear about Mark Wahlberg? I mm -hmm. guess uh, he had an opportunity to do a film with Tom Hanks and uh, refused, and said that he'll be praying for him. That's what he said. Yeah. No, he didn't like yes. that. Just like that? You, I mean, Tom Hanks was on the list. I know he is. He was on the Epstein list. And then there's like the rumors pizza, that he was a pizza. There's a lot of rumors. He's tied to the Pizzagate thing. Yeah. He's tied to a bunch of things. Oh, that breaks and my they, heart too. I was a big fan of his. You know? I know. And they they, they kind of tried to soften it by saying he didn't agree with his woke politics or whatever, oh. uh, which we all kind of know why. Mm. You know, we know why he didn't want to do that. Interesting. But I thought that was a bold move, you know? Yeah, Wahlberg is one of the few that are, are like taking a hard stance. Like, there's it a, seems to be very principled. Yeah. There's only, there's know? a, there's a handful. Uh, the other one is too. What's the guy who did the Sound of Freedom? Jim uh, Caviezel? Yes. yes. Yeah, Jim yeah, Caviezel. Yeah. And then uh, uh, Mel Gibson. And who's that a, comedian that, that Justin always says he's, he, if he, he wishes would play him? That one actor. If he, oh, if, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Justin's always like, I would let Such him play me in a movie. What's his name? Oh, is this is the guy I wanted to be. Me. Come on. Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, oh, oh, Chris Pratt. Chris yeah, 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 yeah. Chris yeah, Pratt yeah. like that too. He could totally pull it off. Yeah, yeah. Saying, <laughs> if he wants to do it. That's, uh, he was great in the Lego what movie. Wait, what famous actor would do everybody? Okay, you're, that's Chris Pratt is you. That's, I think that's a really good one for you. Who does Who does Sal? Oh, who does Sal? Sal is, asshole, Antonio Elba, Banderas. Right? What? What? <laughs> <laughs> But who does he's that? a handsome Someone, guy. I mean, he's, he's not, not the right Brown. Robert De Niro. He's not the right ethnicity, but he looks like Robert De Niro. Yeah. Who, who does? We're he? about the same age. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who, do, who does? Who does Sal? Oh man. Who does Doug? Um, Jason Statham. 
<laughs> Sylvester Stallone for Sal. Oh, oh Stallone. Oh, yeah, Stallone. So that, that, would be, that would be full yeah. circle right yeah, there. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, you're Razor Ramon. Who <laughs> plays that guy? That's <laughs> He's not even an actor. That's not fair. You're going to like a, give me like the porn star actor. You know what I'm who does me? Give me like a real actor. Just like it's like a good actor. I know, I know. I can't. So far, Stallone's, I'm even Stallone's pretty good. You know what I'm saying? He is, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't do it. Like I can't think of Razor Ramon. <laughs> I don't know why I thought of them with the toothpick, you know? Yeah. Okay, I don't know. Hey, speaking of woke, did you hear about the study they did on, on woke people? No. They did a study on woke <laughs> yes, people? Yes, they did, bro. Uh, study finds finally a like a study. willing study. Yeah, yeah. listen, you guys okay. are going to be, uh, I don't know if you'll be shocked, but by the way, woke, I'll define what that is. Okay, okay so everybody thank calm you, down. please. But the title of the article said, study finds that woke people are more likely to be unhappy, anxious, and depressed. So <laughs> here's here are some really? of the questions- that um that that they identify these people as as well. So here's one of them. If white people have an average of a higher level of income than black people, it is because of racism. Or university reading lists should include fewer white or European authors. Microaggressions should be challenged often and actively. Trans women who compete with women in sports are not helping women's women's rights. That's a reverse score. So if you say you disagree with that, then you're woke. We don't need to talk more about the color of people's skin. Another reverse score, um, and and so on. So oh, that's interesting. How so, they, so they basically tested. Uh, yeah. the, you had to answer oh, this. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, yes. that's kind yes. of interesting. Yeah. So then they figure out. Okay. Like, okay, you're more on that woke. And, and they also found that these people were um, more. They just suffered from anxiety, depression. And, when and what what, what, what else have we ever seen? It is an example of like. So there was a time when woke was a positive thing. Yeah, that was used. That it got used, marketed, right? It got adopted and marketed and turned into a bad thing. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't a bad thing before. I mean, woke well, was woke was like a, enlightened initially, yes, right? Yes. Like, it's like I'm awake. I, wow, yeah. they were they they had 67 percent higher rates of anxiety, 32 percent higher rate of depression, and uh, wow, those are big. Those are big numbers. Hmm. Well, it, it, to me, it makes sense because if you're like if you're anxious and depressed, you're looking at the world through that lens. That's right. Blaming and everything else. Blaming everything yeah, else. Versus and, and accountability. Yeah, versus accountability. Yeah. Yeah. And you're thinking about all that stuff. Or or you, you're also, I don't know. It's interesting. It's interesting that they found that. <laughs> that is interesting. I, I know. You know what? I th here's a change of subject a little bit. Uh, uh, interesting, I think, is... <clears throat> so the audience, I don't know how much we've shared. Obviously, they've definitely heard us talk about uh, how anti-app. Uh, I know that I've been for a very long time oh, because yeah. of Justin and I's sour taste in our mouth for our experience in the this app one world. I, this one of the times yeah. I, this is another time I appreciate Adam's business acumen. He <sighs> saved us. You've been complimenting me a lot lately. Oh, I like this. Deserved. I like, eat, are you, are you guys clipping like, these out, like Andrew? Pills. It's deserved. Could you clip these out so we could put like a little. Listen, I'll say it when it's deserved. <laughs> <laughs> it's real. No, I, and this was not me searching for a compliment in this. More so just like, it's just incredible. Like, uh, you know the app space is incredible is, is is very saturated and really tough to be super successful make a lot of money um so we stayed away from it for a long time yet we've talked to a lot of friends of ours that have built some really incredible apps and uh, we've had multiple conversations about potentially partnering with them or working some sort of a deal out there that way they can host our programs and we can help promote them and We've been a, really close to inking a few deals. In fact, there was there was two that we were really close to and doing. And these are apps, I mean, essentially for trainers and coaches. Yes. Where like, if you're a trainer or coach, this app helps you run your business, work with your clients, communicate with your clients, collect yeah. money, you know, run programs, et cetera. And I know there's a ton of people that are listening right now that are like, oh, I wish you guys had your programs in an app, a different app. And um, and I get it. You know what I'm saying? Um, but understand there's there's a lot more to this, right? It's, it's not easy and it's competitive and it's expensive yeah. to do a really good one. So anyways, we, here we are really close to like partnering up with somebody to potentially do that and out comes NASM one. And this is exactly <laughs> the experience. How, I don't know how you compete with them. You just can't. And, and that's what makes it so difficult in the app world is even if you have a brilliant idea and you've got, and it's so good, all it takes is a big company that's worth a lot of money, like NASM that has a lot of power that can go reverse engineer the best app out there and bolster it even more and put money behind it and advertising behind it and and add to it and add their current existing business yes. on top of that so it's like you already have all your ceus you have all of these courses and things integrated into it it's it's crazy and decades is, of education yeah. it's, it's so what they did which 
I, you know, I feel bad for people in this space because they're dead. They're, there's, <laughs> there's no way they can compete because all those apps that we talked about are like 100, 150 bucks a month or more if you're a trainer or a coach and you're building a business. Yeah. And ASM one's 35 bucks. And it's not just an app. It's yeah. unlimited CEUs. And, and basically, you get access to tons of, of education for yourself. Plus, you get the app that include that allows you to manage your clients, manage their programs, their nutrition, communicate with them through your own, you know, way of, you know, virtual um, conferencing, collect money, runs your business, 35 bucks a month. Uh, also 50% off of all their certifications. Anyway. So all you, if you are, were ever planning to even buy a national certification or one of their certifications or a second one, you get the this. money you save off of that basically covers what the app would cost. Then you have unlimited, like over 300 different CEUs, which is basically enough CEUs to keep your certifications current for the rest of, uh, of your for life. A long time. Yeah. Are you in their network too? Like, can you search NASM trainers in there? That's a good question. I don't oh, know. That I, I didn't know that. Oh, I, I, see if Doug, you can find that up or Andrew, you can find that up. I, that'd be interesting if you can do that. But man, unlimited support from NASM experts. So okay. ask questions so directly to the fitness industry's leading uh, authorities. I mean, they're the leaders in the in the, in the industry. They have been forever. Four free specializations: CPR, business basics, virtual. Oh coaching, yeah, it's so included. Social oh, media yeah. influencer, home gym design, CPR AD certification. Those are free. That's included. <laughs> yeah. That's the one I always forget about as a CPR. Like that always yeah. comes up, and you're like, oh man. It's yeah, just what so. Uh, I mean, this is part, and I don't, I don't know if like NSM, they thought this way when they did it or not. Like, I mean, this was, this in itself is amazing, right? What they're doing, but the app game is crazy. Like, and I didn't know that until we got into it. And I didn't know, like when you, there's like, there's like a handful of like in, in the, in the app world, uh, games are the most profitable. First of all, 80% of the most profitable apps are games, not tools. And uh, you have companies that have, uh, that are own most of them. So like they're big, huge companies and they have, they have like 400 of the most popular, you know, Candy Crush mm -hmm. and all like, they don't just own one game and they're, they, they buy them all up. Yeah. And what they do because they have so much capital and they're so successful is they watch and they sit back and they let somebody else bust their ass on startup and proving the market and the model. And they just reskin it. Yes. <laughs> and they, they let it, they let it get some, they, they let it get some traction. And then they have two options. They go in and make an offer. And go like, hey, we'll buy that off of you for a million dollars. And then the, you know the entrepreneur that worked so hard to build is like, no, this is going to be worth so much it's more. Be a billion dollar I'm, game. This is going to be huge. I'm going to build it myself. No, like, okay. <laughs> so there's nothing that protects you yeah. from somebody reverse engineering it. That that it's not you can't patent uh, that technology. You can't say it's yours. And 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 it's as simple as changing. You said reskinning a couple things, adding a couple features, yeah. color it a little bit you different. You can even rip the code. You yeah, know? that's what I mean. You can yeah. reverse engineer it. You but can the thing with NASM is this is just, and I like this because what they've done with this is besides educating, I mean, they've been the leaders in the industry with national certs since we were trainers uh, and, and before. They What they've done is they've gone from like really educating trainers to now providing them with the tools that you need to to, to run online coaching business or personal training business. And then they brought the price down so low. Uh, I, there's, there's, it's not even, uh, there's no competition. It doesn't make any sense why you would work with any other yeah. company, Yeah. which, you know, like I said, thank, thanks Adam for not letting this <laughs> work with these. We I mean, been, just I would have saw this. I'm like, oh no. Oh yeah, yeah. just imagine how frustrating. We that felt was. the done. pain uh, a long time ago. Thankfully, I mean, I felt yeah. bad for our friends. We have a lot yeah. of friends that went this direction we went anyways because yeah. the the app idea. I get it. Uh, yeah. We were drawn to it, and and it sounds sexy and sounds cool, and everybody makes you think that it's it's something you have to do in business, and it's like, man, it's a it's a risky game yep. to play. Totally. And they they did an incredible job. Speaking so, of trainers and coaches, the so uh, we did a three day course for trainers that we, we did this. When did we do this? How, how long ago was this? January. In January. And in those three days, and it was literally a training. Uh, I, I got up there, Adam and I got up there and we taught trainers, um, getting leads, how to close deals, how to package programs, business plan, how to, had a business plan. Uh, you know, you want to make this much money. Well, then how many people do you need to talk to versus how many people need to show up versus how you end up closing those deals, how to sell big packages. We did a three-day course and it was so popular when we did it. It was so popular that what we decided is let's let's get this and put it together and then give it to everybody for free. So you can go 
now. Um, and it, what's the, what's the link for is it mind pump trainer course? Okay. Mind pump trainer course.com. It's a free training by us for trainers and, and, yep. and coaches, hundred percent yep. free. So if you and missed it, make sure you guys get on it for sure. Get on there and learn how to build your business. And then, and we get a lot of, we have a lot of messages from people that attended the first one who said, um, that their closing percentage went up 20% or that their average per, you know, unit sale went up X amount of dollars. So yeah, yeah. good stuff. Anyway, I, uh, did you guys hear about the kid? I forgot what high school it was. At. I'm gonna pull it up who got in trouble with the school because he drove his truck to school. He had an American flag flying from the back and the school said, you can't do that. Take that flag down. Right. What? Yeah, I know. What? So Indiana high school. Okay. They told the school told him this to take is in his Indiana. Yeah, I know. The Indiana high school told this senior, his name is Cameron Blasek, take the U.S. flag off your truck uh, because it's offensive, quote unquote. Okay, uh, he said, "No, I'm not going to do that." Um, and the school protested. To who? The students protested. A bunch of kids showed up with the American flags on their cars. The schools backed down. Well, check this out. Um, I don't know who gave, who did this, but, oh, CGI digital imaging in Cincinnati heard about this, took his truck and they wrapped his truck. (laughs) (laughs) It's basically a big, no, they uh, did American flag truck. That's so awesome. For free. That's so awesome. Good for you. How weird is that? Offensive. What? Why? How? How's that offensive? I know it's crazy. It's in Indiana too. See, this is where I I, I I feel like it's a troll. I feel like this is all coming from outside influence, and and then like an email or something else, and then it, they there's pressure to some of the administration because it just doesn't feel like that sentiment is is very visible anywhere. I mean, obviously California is it's so the, a different. It's story. weird. Because the only way that makes sense to me that that would happen, especially in Indiana, yeah, it just doesn't make any is sense. If he did it on a day when they were making a different, like r- r- flying another flag for pride or for something it's like else. like Cinco de Mayo uh, and he flies a flag. Exactly. Like that. That's the only thing that makes sense to me is if a he- Maybe we could find out. That would, if, yeah, that would be a little different. And not that it still shouldn't still, matter. Still shouldn't matter. Should, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Ever, so right, right. Should, still shouldn't. But that's the if only If he was thing, like trying to instigate yes, some shit. That's the only thing that makes sense to me. It doesn't on, make sense because I thought, don't all schools have an American flag? Yeah. Up? Yeah. I mean, that's pretty standard. Maybe that maybe Andrew could do allegiance. some digging on yeah. the story because I feel like I bet it was on a day that they I mean, were removed that probably highlighting schools. another group, and it was like they and were, he's like just and trying to be and like, they were probably flying those flags that day. You know what? Like, I bet you're right because otherwise that makes no, no sense. sense. It makes no sense. Like if a kid just showed up with a school with, with yeah. the American flag on his car or in his truck, there's no way that they would. Yeah. Are you guys getting any information? It says it's a violation of school rules, but I need to dig in a bit more. Oh, see, maybe from, it wasn't. From what maybe. I could tell, basically the administration, the same day they had seen it, asked him to remove the American flag from his truck. The next day, basically everybody brought American flags on their trucks and the school reversed their whole thing. <laughs> That's what happens when you fuck with the popular kid. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, <laughs> real quick, you know what I'm saying? It's texting all of my friends. Of Marxist t-shirt <laughs> teachers. Well, if, if that, see, that's insane. That is weird. So dude. they reversed their decision in one day. And then that same day, that kid like showed him like the rules of the school and said, like, there's nowhere here saying that I can't do this. It's also, that'd be a weird ass school uh, rule anyway. It is a weird rule. Yeah, we'd live here. I thought for sure. That, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, that doesn't mean How dare you sense. be proud of where you're from? Yeah. yeah. Or not even proud. Not it's even, the, yeah. It's just it's uh, the country. Oh, hey, I live here. I have a flag of where I live. Yeah, I know. That's like, strange. Why is that offensive? What, what does that you got, say? What do you got, Doug? This is the school's oh. like public message. Oh, uh, yeah. After careful consideration. Yeah, because you guys, it went national. <laughs> he looked really bad. That's why. I like how his car got wrapped, though, in a big-ass American I mean, flag. It's, that's kind of the response. I know. Yeah. I know. Anyway, weird. Uh, yeah. yeah, that is weird. Weird times. That is so weird. Yeah, I, I, that would have ne- I would have never imagined something like that uh, <clears throat> happening. You know, you know what else is weird? What? How this trisepatide is playing out. Oh, right? so okay. Hold on a second. Yeah. It's still early. Okay, still so early, you've had... Early. Yeah, but now this is the second... Two, two days. Okay, and you're noticing the same thing. So what happened last night... Um, it, 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 I was trying to explain this to Katrina because she's like so fascinated and like I need to explain everything, right? She's like, I don't understand. Explain why this, why you feel I'm like I, I 
don't know yet. I said, and it's so early, right? So how much of this is in my head? Uh, I think this, which, but here's the thing. Like, I mean, you guys, uh, hopefully the audience knows, like I'm like super skeptical with shit like this. And I always lean towards, oh, it's coincidence or yeah. something else before I think like something is doing it. But there are some things that have been, I told you guys the other day about the, the way, the craving and stuff like that. What was really trippy was last night. So I, I've, since I've started, I've also been eating really clean. Um, and one of the things when I transitioned from allowing myself to have sweets and ice cream and we just got trapped, we just traveled and doing room service and eating whatever I want, you know, that initial, you guys know when you're transitioning from allowing stuff like that in the diet to not like the cravings are, that's when it's the hardest, the beginning. Yeah. And, then, and then over time. So I always anticipate that to be challenged. Then you add in the fact that I'm, I'm training, we're walking, we're moving more, we're doing all these things. And I should be wanting a lot more calories than- It's not your first time doing this. You know right, what to expect. Right. Last night, chicken and rice. And again, another lean day, low calorie. I washed the car, which took me like an hour, hour and a half to do that. Plus I worked out. Plus I barbecued outside. Plus I walked with you guys yesterday and I ate low calorie. Then at dinner, chicken and, I'm saying chicken and rice. I, I've trained myself. This was the part I was telling Katrina that's kind of interesting. What I noticed last night is like, I have these I have these behaviors. I've talked about this once before on the show that I, I still have to reverse out because of my insecurities of being a skinny kid and training myself to eat big all the time. Yeah. To be to, to keep all this muscle. Force up. feeding yourself yeah. is natural. Like for example, like if I were to order a five guys meal, I order two two double burgers. Because but I couldn't do that when I was 20. I had to train myself yeah. to be able to eat that. Where now and I'm not even training that hard. I still have the habit of doing that. Right. And then I'll even catch myself like stuffing myself when I don't need it or want. So keep that in mind, right? So I, I do this with portion sizes. When I eat, sit down and eat a couple chicken thighs, I don't eat Katrina's portion size. I eat double of her portion mm -hmm. sizes normally. So I'm sitting down and we're eating dinner last night and uh, I'm like, I'm full. And I'm like halfway through my plate. And I, and I look at her and I'm just like, yeah, I don't have a desire to even eat anymore. And I'm like, I'm going to go put it in the microwave and and leave it there and see after I shower and, and a couple hours go by if I get really hungry again. Maybe I'm just just not hungry right now, but I should be. I'm like, I'm low calorie. I trained. I burned all this much. I was low calorie yesterday, trained, did all those things. Still haven't had a lot. And then thought I would. I ended up finishing the chicken later on that night, like at eight o'clock at night. I finished the other half of the, the serving. Was it? But, did you have to make yourself? Yeah. So the so the and worry, I did it because I knew I was low in protein. That's what I'm gonna say. Yeah. I wonder if that's, no, that's gonna be the challenge. It is gonna be the challenge. challenge. It, it, but what I also told her that I'm trying to do right now is, hmm. I'm I'm also trying not to to do that too much. If that makes sense, like I don't want to like I know I have the discipline. Like even if I feel like I shouldn't eat, force myself to eat more protein. Yeah. I want to just try and like really feel how I feel. And if I'm hungry, just discipline myself to make the good choices. But. So far, it hasn't been hard to to make the good choices. I haven't had a craving Weird. for some high calorie foods. Weird, and it's it's a trip because I mean, like I'll, I'm like I know I have it in there, and I'm like, oh, does that, it doesn't even sound that good. I don't really want it. I haven't wanted it yet. So again, so early. So, someone close to me who's on the not terzepatide, hmm. but semaglutide, which is a similar peptide, said the exact same thing. Yeah, she said, I I know it tastes good. I just don't want it. In fact, she said, I'll have uh, dessert and I'll have a, I'll just taste it, which she's like, I could never do that before. This was a big problem for her mm -hmm. where she couldn't just have a bite of something. It was either none or all. Right. If she had a bite, then it was just over, it would overcome her. And she's like, I'll have a bite of my husband's, uh, you know, dessert. And then I'm ha I'm like totally content. She's like, that is not. So that's what I'm seems. waiting. It's funny. Cause I mean, that's kind of what happened to me just cause of the pain that ensues later for me oh with your gut yeah health. like i've just been conditioned to like oh, yeah. and so i'll take a bite and then be like any more now i'm done you know yeah. like but that's, so another, that's why i would wonder i'm like I that's another weight loss method is just develop gut <laughs> just health. have your gut <laughs> problems yeah. so I, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to that because i'm just like what you're describing i'm all or nothing when it comes to sweets and things like that and so i'm i'm but as of right now i haven't even wanted it and if I have at all an appetite, the way I'm thinking is like, oh, I, I've only had so many servings of protein. I need to get another another a protein meal in. So uh, I wonder how many, this has got to be extremely popular with pre-contest bodybuilders. It has to be. Well, we'll see because again, 
we're we're early in this. Let's see how challenging it is for me to hit protein consistency. Yeah, but yeah. you know how some of these bodybuilders and physique competitors get down so low. I know, but they still eat a lot of protein. Five weeks before. They still eat a lot of protein, mm -hmm. though. I mean, they're not missing their protein. They're mm -hmm. still eating. I mean, bodybuilders. So you don't. think it might be so strong? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm so uh, like, <clears throat> I'm not like. How many grams are you hitting? Yeah, right so now? I'm not tracking in and out, but I'm only getting like 150 to 170. Oh, that's it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, but so I, you're and, under. And I'm letting myself. Because I want to see, like, what I don't, the idea for me for for this, so the audience can hear me go through this process. I obviously know I have crazy discipline when it comes to training and diet and stuff like that. Yeah. I don't want to prove that I can go hit, you know, like, like I could force myself to go hit these numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to go after I feel because what I what I what I think or what I'm trying to communicate, hopefully, is that. How, how hard this could be for somebody when it comes to keeping muscle. Well, this, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. I, that's, I'm so glad you communicated because I'm the same way, Adam. I, you know, I same thing, skinny kid. So I know how to force feed myself. It's yeah. not a problem. For the average person, if it's that strong, it's already hard enough to hit protein targets. Yes. And if they didn't, if they don't have the insecurities that I have, <laughs> yeah. like, you know, like you might end up eating 60 grams of protein in the day. Yes. Is that okay? So, and that okay. is what I'm trying to do is I'm, and that's what I was trying to explain to Katrina because Katrina's like, well, aren't, aren't you worried you're going to lose all this muscle? I'm like, I'm not worried about anything because I can get everything back if I want to. Yeah. I'm like, I really want to, I said, I'm trying to go through this experiment. Is she worried? <laughs> yeah, she's, she would all, that's a, I tell you what, that's half of my issues too, is that my wife would prefer me overly thick. She than, likes you heavy? Than, yeah, oh mean? Yeah. Anytime I'm like, I'm, I'm soft right now and big, I'm 231, right? So I started this at 231, which is, that's a heavy weight for me, but she, she'd prefer me there than yeah. me at like 190 and like <laughs> shredded. You know what mm. I'm saying? Like she likes the thick. So what that doesn't help. Yeah. What about, so obviously you don't have a lot of other like sort of impulse addictions or anything. I do. I do. Okay. But I, well, okay, I, like, like what else? Well, so I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, he gonna, hasn't read our ears in a couple well, of Well, yeah, he hasn't done that. So yeah. I'm going to hold, I'm going to hold back on sharing those yet. Because I want you to tell me off air. Huh? Yeah, I can't yeah, wait to hear yeah, off air. Yeah. yeah off air. I'll, I'll share, I'll share with you guys. And I'll, that's where I'm actually more curious. I'll, I'll share with the audience too. I will eventually, but I'm too early to be like, let me guess. Speculating gotta, it has to be either gambling or stop, stop, uh, stop. I'll, it's I'll, gotta be I'll, something like that, right? I'll tell you, I'll, t I'll tell you all of them. I have plenty of things that I mean, every, <laughs> I, that I, I do that are not good habits. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I am interested to see, and it tends, I, it's two days in. So yeah, it's so yeah, early we don't know yet. to be speculating yeah, on all this. But so far, so good and interesting. Very interesting that um, there are already things that I'm I'm very confident that I would have a pool towards okay. that I have it. All so right. I am Justin, though. And again, this is through our partners at mphormones.com. And I want to say that because I don't want people going online and buying these yeah. peptides from research chemical labs. No. Not a good no, idea. No shady. It's, it's a, what's a trip too is that I didn't know one. I didn't know it was like a, only a once a week shot, which is great. That's it. Yeah, that's really, it's just so crazy that something. You're on, by the way, you're on one. Yes. I think you start at one fourth or one tenth. The, I don't know. It's a, it's a, oh, it goes up? You're on one fourth. The, if, if, I'm, if I'm correct, you start at one you fourth the real, dose. Yeah. You are not at full dose. Real it takes four weeks to get up to the full dose. Wow. Yeah. So this will be interesting. Yeah, I'm super interested. I, you know, I, I uh, tend to have motivation too to get things done. I, I find myself. Well, oh, uh, so that was the message so I, I got. Very, Someone said they procrastinate. Yeah, no, I'm very like uh, coming off a of vacation and not eating well, the travel, all that stuff like that, and then to for me to not miss a workout, be yeah. washing my car, full days at work, barbecuing outside, not, not procrastinating. Yeah, helping clean around the house. I'm doing a lot of that st stuff too. So mm. it's like, let's see if this kind of maintains while I'm also simultaneously noticing that I, there's some behaviors and things that are not ideal and healthy for myself that I'm like, I have, I don't have a pool to them right now. So I don't know. Oh it's, my God. Yeah. Mm, check back with strange. me. And, yeah. Yeah. Check strange. back in a week or two. I'll be, I'll be honest about what I'm noticing, but okay. interesting already. I'm All very, right. I'm very fascinated with what I'm All noticing. Right. I got a, uh, the shout out I have, I don't know what the guy's name is. Did you find him, Doug? It was an 89 year old bodybuilder. So Jim Arrington. Yeah. So I saw a clip, maybe you could pull up his YouTube or, a clip of this guy working out. And you know what's interesting about this? So he's 89, okay? So, um, and he's working out in a tank top in this one video I saw. The the more consistent you are with your workouts and fitness and the older you get, the younger you look in comparison to your actual age. Because like if you're 45 and you work out consistently, someone may be like, oh, you look like you're 38, right? This guy's 89. He looks like a fit, like 68 year old or something like that. It's like, look at that wow. guy. Wow. That's 89. He's 89. 89. That's so sick. Now, Champion. That's you, so sick, Obviously, bro. he's an advanced age. You could tell by his face, his hair, the whole deal. But I know I've, I've trained people in their 80s. I know people in their 80s, what they look like and how they move. 
That's crazy. That's that so crazy, crazy dude. That's 80, so sick. Yes. Isn't that great? Yeah. Goals. Yeah. Really inspiring. That is awesome. Where's he at? Where's he based out of? Uh, California. California. Did you shout his full name out? Did you give him love? Yeah, Maybe Jim like Arrington. Jim he doesn't Arrington. seem to have social. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. I couldn't oh, find anything. Doesn't need it. Yeah. No, good stuff. Wow. That's cool. There's a company called Ned that makes full spectrum hemp oil extract products high in CBD and other cannabinoids that can help you with things like mental performance, relaxation, or produce feelings of euphoria. They have a new product called the Brain Blend. This has cannabinoids known to improve cognitive function to make you feel more uplifted and motivated. By the way, you feel this. If you take it, you know you took something. Go check it out. Oh, yeah. By the way, it's also legal in all 50 states. Go to helloned.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump and get yourself 15% off. All right. Back to the show. Our first caller is Ray from Texas. Ray, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, what's up, man? How are you guys doing? Good, good, good. man. What's going on? Uh, well, I, I, I guess I'll get to it. Um, my question is, um, do fat burners affect your muscle building uh, potential? Um, so a little bit of background. I've been, I'm 39. I've been lifting since I was about 17. Um, before that, I was always kind of like chubby kid. So it was always in the back of my mind. And then at around like 18, I started taking uh, fat burners and I've kind of been on them since then it's just a for me it's always wanting to be lean um and i think that's all that's been my biggest problem and uh i'm just i've just wanted to get, hear your guys opinion i've heard you guys uh, say a lot of insightful things and i just was curious as what your thoughts were so uh, fat burners typically will fall into like two categories there'll be a category of fat burners that you could loosely classify as uh, supplements that contain stimulants, ingredients. Well, that's the other one, right? Yeah. The first one I was going to go is, you know, ingredients that help, let's say, the liver or the body mobilize fat or process fat. Uh, the second category are stimulant-based fat burners. Now, the way that they and they're they're largely a waste of time uh, and, and money. Now, the reason why people like them typically is the stimulant-based ones give you energy. You know, back in the day, you mentioned hydroxycut. Back in the day, that was the old ephedra, caffeine, you know, stack. And uh, they they definitely affect the sympathetic nervous system. They will get you amped up. They will give you energy um, until your body adapts and your body does adapt. Um, and they do, they do have an appetite suppressing effect. And most or many stimulants do this. Caffeine, to some extent, will suppress appetite. Ephedra, seniferin will do this. Yohimbi, to some extent, uh, will do this. And then your, you know, your your prescription based stimulants like Adderall, Ritalin will do the same thing. And so they'll they'll they tend to um, suppress appetite. And so some people see that effect and say, oh, this helps me with weight loss. But what happens is your body adapts. It downregulates receptors, reduces its production of catecholamines like epinephrine and norepinephrine. And so you find that after that initial, you know, four or five week period, the same dose doesn't do the same thing and you need more to produce a larger or, or to start to recreate that effect. But then along with a larger dose comes more side effects, heart palpitations, anxiety, sleep issues, uh, and stuff like that. And then when you go off, there's a rebound effect because then when you go off, now your body is below baseline. And so your, your receptors have to upregulate again. Your body has to start producing catecholines means more again. And so the weight gain, whatever weight loss that you had from the appetite suppressing effects comes back in that post period uh, when you come off. Now, as far as muscle building is concerned, um, I, you know, because of the rise in cortisol and stress on the body, fat burners generally, and I don't, I don't, this is not like a huge impact depends on the individual, but generally speaking, because they add stress to the body and they don't have necessarily a favorable impact on hormones, probably not great for muscle building. I think some stimulants pre-workout used appropriately can drive more productive workouts. So pre-workout supplements are a category of this, but other than that, it's not really, I think people should look at fat burners the same way they look at pre-workouts and say, do I want this little energy boost and how do I manage this so that it's appropriate 
and how do I cycle off and on and, and, and manage my dose so that it doesn't become, uh, you know, mostly negative side effects. What, what, Ray, what are your, what are your like primary goals right now? I know you kind of mentioned like what you were coming from body dysmorphia wise and not wanting to be the fat mm -hmm. guy and that's in your head and stuff like that. But like, what are your, like, are you trying to build muscle? Are you trying to lose body fat? Are you happy where you're currently at? What are you trying to do? So, um, I do want to build muscle and I've, I've, like I said, I've been lifting now for a long time. Um, I've never really been able to get past, uh, like a 165. Um, I, my weight fluctuates between 155 and 165. I'm a pretty small guy. I'm five, six. Um, and right now I've since here, since listening to you guys, um, I've actually kind of like cut, cut the, uh, the, the fat burning taking that I'm doing. I cut the dose in half. Um, cause again, like with the body dysmorphia, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm scared to get back to that, you know, to that big guy that I used to be. Um, so, but my goal overall is to, to build muscle. This is what I like to do for are you. Are you following any of our maps programs yet? Uh, currently I've, I've been running the, uh, the 40 plus. Okay. Oh, good. Oh, Very great. Good. Great program. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. Stick with that. Um, you're not in the forum, are you? I don't believe so. No. Okay. So I'm gonna have Doug put you in our private forum. And that what we need to do right now is just focus on building muscle. Honestly, the, the, uh, the fat burning supplements aren't doing us any favors. I mean, it's yeah. not, why do you, why do you like them? Is it because of the energy? It it's sounds like, it sounds like you've just conditioned yourself yeah. to take it since you were yeah. 20 like years old. Ritual. At this but point, right? What is it about them that you like? Is it the energy that you get from them? The, the stimulant effects? Uh, probably the stimulant effect. The fact that it, it, it makes me feel leaner than I would without them. Yeah. Cause the, the, uh, when I cut when I cut the the dose in half, like I could, you know, I guess I could feel a little bit more around the midsection, around the chest. Yeah. Um, where before it was more of a, a leaner look, and it doesn't. It's, it's not, been about. He's on a stimulant free. Yeah. What what fat burner are you taking? He's right on. Now? He's on a stimulant free. He's on. A, it's um evolution nutrition. It's one of the. It's like a. I forget the name of it. Yeah. Waste of money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's not doing anything for you. Yeah, I just, that's my. my, my hey, no, it's, listen, yeah, listen, Ray. A hundred percent. Your mind, yeah. One hundred percent. The data on these are clear. It's doing nothing for you, aside from the potential mental effects, or if you're lacking a nutrient or whatever. It is not doing anything for you. You have a psychological that, att attachment. To this pill. In fact, I could switch out your pills with vitamin yeah, C. You sure. wouldn't know the difference. Yeah. So that my my point of putting you in the form is that right. So you're already following a great program. I I just wanted to put you in the community where you have access to us, mm -hmm. and then I'd really like you to. And then I'd really like you to get off the fat burners completely. And then as you go through the process, check in with us. Let us know how things are going. I I saw your here too. You're tracking protein, right? So you're you're hitting your protein targets. That's the main advice I'd give you. Is like stay focused on hitting your protein take. Follow a good program like that. Save your money on the on the all the fat burn shit. Right. And anytime that you have uh, you're frustrated because you feel like you see something like post about it, post about it, and let the community and ourselves support you through that process. Because I I think most of this is psychological. I yeah. think most of this is. You, <clears throat> if there's, are there's, you a coffee drinker? You you drink caffeine like on top of this, or is this just uh, kind of right before your workout? You take these pills. Uh, it's usually after my workout. Um, I don't drink coffee, but I do drink an energy drink maybe yeah. uh, once or twice a week. Yeah. yeah. So it, there's really only uh, uh, up until now. Okay. When it comes to like weight loss and in that is fat, but if you, if you eat enough protein and strength train properly, this there's really only one thing so far that's been shown to be quite effective and it's a peptide. It's not a supplement. There is no fat burning supplement out there that has been shown to do anything with any great effect. The stimulant based ones definitely showed some effect, but there was always a rebound and there was always a, a, a right. price to pay. Are you are you reading these, Sal? Are you reading these up here? I'm the, going to look at lean, lean, no, no, no. Lean, what, what, lean BCAA. What's the name of the one that what? you're taking? So he didn't know. See, there's four up here. There's uh Looks like engine shred, There's lean, lean mode. mode, transform, and lean BCAA. Do you remember the name of yours? Uh, lean mode. Lean mode. Lean mode. All right. Well, when that's, we get when we get off here, why don't I analyze no, 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 we the can look at it. We can look at it. Right I now. will. Let's yeah. pull up the ingredients. Yeah, yeah. Doug's got it right now. Yeah, yeah. So read those ingredients off. Green so, tea. Green tea, okay, green, so. tea green coffee, CLA, acetyl l carnitine. I mean, none of these are unhealthy. Yeah. There's some antioxidant effects. 
Uh, L-carnitine, if you lack it, has got some nice effects on on performance. But if you eat meat, you're getting plenty of carnitine. CLA is uh, a type of uh, fatty acid um, that has been shown in studies. If you replace one fatty acid with that if one. If he has a cup of coffee and a steak, he takes care of most of this. It's, uh, it, this is, yep. you know, and no disrespect to this company or whatever. I'm sure they're a great company. But really, it's like a, this is kind of like an antioxidant supplement that might maybe have some potential health benefits. But no, there's nothing in here that it's doing nothing for you yeah, for yeah. fat loss. Yeah. Waste, waste, you're waste, you're wasting your money. No, it's also not hurting. I anything. think you're right. I, yeah. Yeah. I think it is a lot psychological and yeah, just having sure. it is, is a psychological effect, but I think you guys are right. How long have you been taking this one? This one in particular, probably about six months. So you spent like 70 something dollars on this. That's not that bad. That's well, no, that's not bad, but uh, uh, how many of our programs do you own? <laughs> <laughs> he's got the right one. He's got the right just one. The he, just started, <laughs> he just started listening not that long ago. I know. Uh, it's like cut a the month. guy some slack, yeah, he, and he's on the right program. I'll tell you what, Ray. This You're, is what I'm going to tell you right now. It, it, if, if the best investment you can make, if you want to spend money and you want to get a huge return for body composition, performance, muscle, all that stuff, is if you find yourself a good trainer, a good coach who's got good experience, and just work with them a little bit. You can do like once a month sessions or find one that works online. Somebody that's good, uh, that'll pay you back way more results than, than or, these supplements. Or you can just keep listening to the podcast and I just well, that's you, free. And I just put you in the forum for free yeah. where you have a community of great trainers and ourselves in there. So I got you. So you just follow the 40 plus, get yourself off all the extra supplements because it's not doing you any favors. It's not right. really hurting, but it's not doing you any favors. Yeah. So save the money, get in there, talk to us, communicate with us as you go through the process. And how long are you been doing the 40? Did you just get it started? The 40 plus program? Uh, I did. I'm in, uh, I'm in the phase two. Okay. Just started oh, beautiful. Phase two. Cool. Beautiful. How, how, how's it going so far for you? Uh, so far, so good. Um, I feel a little bit stronger. I'm still, I'm a little confused about like the off days. So I've just been adding like uh cardio as far as like 20 minutes of run or uh 20 minutes of biking in between the actual that's fine. workout days. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. No, we'll see you in the forum, dude. We'll give yeah. you, we'll give you some help. Okay. That, that sounds great. Thank you so much. You All got right. it, man. Thank All you. Right. All right, dude. He just found the podcast that looks like a one month. Yeah. Ago. I saw yeah. that. It was, yeah, he's, yeah, a, so he's a new he's, listener. Yeah. He's just getting into it right the, now. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, it's frustrating. I know. It's well, it's frustrating because uh, so much of the information that's put out there by our space, it it, it it creates this narrative that supplements do so much more than they do. Yeah, the most effective supplement that exists, hands down, period, end of story, is creatine in yeah. terms of what it actually delivers. And creatine isn't going to blow your mind. It's not going to change everything. Yeah. Not, everything not else, you're vegan. Everything yeah. else is under that. Now, they, by, by the way, this is coming from a supplement addict. I have issues with supplements. I would take waste the money supplements, but I make a lot of money and I can waste that kind of money. Yeah. And I also know that I got a problem and I'm not going to communicate that uh, to somebody who asked me. I mean, like that time I was in the gym when I was <laughs> taking a bunch of supplements and yeah. the dude next to me is like, man, you look great. Does that work for you? And I'm like, no, it doesn't. This is so, waste, that's, waste so, so typically when I, when I have clients, like this is what I, I would actually ask that first. I'm just like, you know, what, what's your disposable income look like, bro? Like, yeah. can you burn 300 bucks yeah. a month? Like it ain't no thing. Like if you can, then okay. Then, and, and if, yeah. cause here's the other part that you have, we, you have to understand too. Is, and we don't have this guy on a on a day to day basis as a client right now. Is if the psychological part is so powerful that that's yeah. also what gets him to eat better or show up to the gym because he took his supplement right? Yeah. Like I wouldn't fuck with it's that. It's like the dude's lucky it's, socks when he plays basketball. Exactly. Yes. It, it's like his uniform that you know. It's the same like weight. Yes. As, as like buying new clothes for the gym. That's right. It's like you know if if that motivates you to be consistent. Well, then like, it's worth it. And that's and yeah. that's how I communicate this to someone. Like, listen, it's it's not it's not helping you really. It's not really hurting you at all. It's a waste of money. But if you notice that hey, when I because I noticed it about myself. When I, like, except for it's reverse for me, like I have a hard time taking any of the supplements and pills I'm supposed to take. Uh, but when I'm training and I'm consistent, I tend to do that, right? So it's like, there's a connection there of, hey, I'm better when I'm when I'm doing these things. If you notice that when you take that supplement, and I used to be like this as a kid when I used to take lots of supplements, is when I take that as a kid, when I, 30 bucks was a lot of money to me, and I took a scoop of something, it was like, I got to work out. So it's yeah. like, there's that, there's that psychological part yeah. 
that it's okay. Look, you know? if you want to uh, look, it's diet, exercise, sleep, lifestyle. But if you want to take something that has been shown, like unequivocally, that'll help with some of that stuff. And again, this isn't Trump. What I just said: diet, sleep, exercise, lifestyle. Didn't go with a GLP one agonist uh, and and you and go through a doctor. We worked them mphormones.com. There's no fat burner that's ever existed in the world that'll compare with something like that. And that even won't fix all your problems. Our next caller is Julia from Canada. Hi, Julia. Julia. How can we help you? Hi. Hello, hello. Hi, guys. How you doing? I'm so excited I'm fangirling over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. How can we help you? Well, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but it's an honor to speak to you guys. I've been a listener for a very long time, like episode 300 or something. Oh, wow. um, <laughs> so you guys have been with me for years. You've been with me through the lives, ups and downs. So I really appreciate thank having you. you guys in my life. Right so on. thank appreciate you. Appreciate the support. Yeah. Um, I won't take up too much of your time. So I'm going to read my question just so I don't forget what I was going to say. Um, so I'm 41. I have a sedentary job. I am not an athlete. I am not a trainer. I am not a hardcore gym rat. I am so average. I work out about four times a week and I try to maintain some cardio, but I hate it. Team no sweat with Adam. I've always loved going to the gym uh, for my own little personal stress relief and maintain my health, but I've never really had the time or opportunity to really go hard and go after it. So now I'm finally at a point in my life where I can do more, focus on myself, um, my aesthetics, um, Hope to just do more than the bare minimum for my health. So my question is, have I now reached my maximum potential of what my body can do now that I'm 41? Is it too late to get the dream body now that I'm older um, without having any kind of background? So did I miss my chance for the newbie gains or am I destined to just stick with what I got? No, uh, oh, no. For, well, first of all, <laughs> four not. days a week is not average. I mean, four days a week. How long have you been consistent going to the gym? Years, I fall off every once in a while for a couple months, but um, probably about a decade. I've been doing it really consistently about four four days a week, probably for maybe about a, a year now. You're kicking ass. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you're kicking major ass. So, what is your what's the goal now? Like, wh you say go to the next level. What do you mean? What does that mean for you? Aesthetics, she said. Yeah, be a hot mom. Like, be, be specific. A hot mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, you know. So, so, uh, so what does that mean? Does that mean like more muscle, leaner? Does that mean there's a specific, uh, you know, look that you're looking for? Body parts. Yeah. That stuff. Um, well, I live in Florida, so having to go to the beach often, not be embarrassed to go to the beach, look better, aesthetic goals, um, and also to be able to kick someone's butt if I had to. Wow. <laughs> that's awesome. You got great, Sounds great awesome. goals. Yeah, yeah. You know, working out as consistently as you have been and you, you, you do, you listen to our show. So I'm assuming you do good strength training. It's it's pro it's almost probably all going to be about diet. Consistency yeah. with diet mm -hmm. is where you're going to see the big aesthetic changes. Um, do, are you following any of our programs? Uh, what does your strength training program look like? I try. I have Maps Aesthetic, um, which is really hard, which is kind of like my follow-up question. I do have access to a big box gym. I have a home gym. And um, kind of a more powerlifting gym. The box gym is easier for me to get to. I don't really like working out at home because my bed is here. This is where all my food is. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, it's harder to work on my aesthetic goals at the big box gym, having to fight for the weights and so forth. You're, I so mean, I try my best with anabolic. And I do have MAPS 40 plus. Um, I feel like that kind of maintains a little yeah. more of my physique. All, so all those programs are going to be very good. So long as they're not like aesthetic is really high volume. And for most people, it's too much volume, even for me. So maps aesthetic, I can follow s rarely when everything's perfect. Uh, but if, if things, if something's off, especially sleep, it's just too much volume uh, for me as well. And it's, that's true for most people, but maps 40 plus maps anabolic, you know, map strong mass performance, those are all going to be really effective workout programs. It's going to be the nutrition. This is where where the big aesthetic changes happen. Now, if you weren't working out, we would be talking about your exercise program or if you weren't consistent. But the fact that you're consistent and four days a week is exceptional, um, it's going to be nutrition. And so you're going to have to be seven days a week consistent with nutrition, hit your protein targets, know what your macros should be, where your cal caloric maintenance is. And just be very, very consistent with that. And that's where you're going to start to see the big visual changes that you're looking for. 
the one thing I will d- address with the workouts, because I don't know about the workouts, and I literally just had a conversation with Katrina about one of her girlfriends. You guys are the same age. And uh, she typically will help some of her friends out, giving them advice, advice that she hears from, you know, obviously me talking to her for so many years. And she's like, I don't understand. I've, I've got her eating her protein. I've got her doing this. I've got her doing that. And she's just, she's not seeing the results anymore. I said, well, when was the last time you you worked out with her? She goes, oh, it's it's been a, a while since she first started. And I said, why don't you get a workout with her and tell me what you notice, like when she does like the big lifts, like when she squats, deadlifts. If, if she is pushing herself the way you know that I push you when you train, and sure shit, that's what it was. She had been kind of lifting the same weight in a lot of these lifts that she's been lifting forever, and she just had this fear of adding more weight to the bar. So even though I don't know if this is something that you are challenged with at all, but sometimes when I have clients that have been lifting for a really long time and they're not seeing the results they want to, their bodies have gotten so adapted to the movements that they do, and they have like, this is my weight. When I do dumbbell press, I do this weight. When I do squatting, I do this weight. Have you been stretching yourself and your capacity to do some of the lifts that we have in there? Is that you or no? Yeah, I try to add weight, but it might be some aspect to that, a little mind over matter, kind of scared to add too much weight um, since I work out on my own. Um, Scared to do it and failing in front of everybody at the gym that I don't know. Sure. So that could be it. Okay. So a combination of that with what Sal is say is going to be our secret recipe here, right? Like the combination of stretching your capacity a little bit, actually, you know, push yourself. One, another way to solve that without, without like adding somebody is actually a program that's really unique and different, right? So we could yeah. go a different route with the training program. And so we'll stimulate some growth by doing just new exercises that are unique that's one way that we could do this. And then the other is to really attack the nutrition. Um, the other thing that's uh, most of my female clients struggle with is consistently hitting the protein intake. How do you do with that? Yeah, there you go. So there's, yeah, I don't so, want to comment. <laughs> it's no, bad. Well, no, no, that's, it, it's, that's good though. It's good that you are. It's good that we have a very clear answer. Yes. Like, like right there, the two things I just hit on will literally start to completely shift and change. Your if you that's hit, the way you're going to move the needle right yeah. there. Do you have a most. target? Do you have a target body weight? Um, probably not realistic what I look like in my twenties. So, okay. well, let's, yeah. let's, let's, okay. The reason why I asked is it, hit your target body weight in protein I think a body fat test would help with this because then you'll see what a good, like a, like the the body fat percentage that most women are pretty happy with that isn't extreme, that is sustainable, is typically in the low twenties or high teens, uh, but typically around 20, 21 percent body fat. You're lean, you're healthy, you're fit. Hormones are good. You can maintain it. It's not extreme. Um, and so it, figure out where that would be. What what body weight that would place at? Hit your body weight in grams of protein. Eat that first from Whole Foods, and that alone should make a pretty significant difference in both fat loss and and then the sculpting part. I, but I, it's at, at this it's diet at this point, Julia. It's a hundred percent diet. I, I can't stress enough the impact that consistently. And I'll give you a number: uh, one thirty five. Hit one hundred thirty five grams of protein every day. That's that's I, I know that's close enough without even seeing a test that that'll do you just right. If you're hitting one hundred thirty five grams of protein every day. And you're consistently following one of the programs. It will absolutely give me 30 days. Just start with a, a goal like that. Like, okay, 30 days. I, I'm going to commit to the boys. It's like I'm, 45 grams of protein, I, breakfast, lunch, dinner. I'm not going to miss that protein intake. And just between that and you consistently following one of the programs, even not even stretching your capacity, like I said, because what I think will happen is you'll naturally start to feel yourself oh, you'll get, get stronger. Strong. You'll get stronger. And then you'll be able to, it'll be that much easier to add weight yeah. to the bar. But that is, it's so paramount to building muscle and building muscle is so paramount to speeding your metabolism up to make leaning out and sculpting that body that you're that you're wanting to and you are not at all too old no not at all no i absolutely my, my most fit clients most of them are in their 40s uh, in just in terms of aesthetics do you do you have an idea of how many grams of protein you're eating now per day mm, i was tracking it for a minute but it wasn't good. It's, Basically, it's just breakfast and dinner and a lot of eggs. This will make a huge... What's a lot of eggs? How many eggs? Yeah. Four or six. Um, <laughs> yeah. 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 You're, you're, if, you're let way, me put it this way. way under, if you're like, yeah. if you're eating like 60, 70 grams of protein a day, which is probably what you're hitting, and then you go up to 135 and you hit it from whole natural foods. 
So breakfast, 45 grams of protein. See what that looks like. Eat that first. If you want other stuff on top of that, that's fine. But eat the protein first. Then lunch, 45 grams of protein. Then you want some carbs and some vegetables. That's fine too. And then the same thing with dinner. You just do that. Watch what happens. But by the way, you're an example too of somebody who, if I had them just add a protein shake every day, would think that the protein shake is magical because just adding a protein shake with yeah, 30 to 40 that. grams of protein. You know protein, why I didn't say that, Adam? Because that's what she's going to do now. Yeah, yeah, but Hit the whole natural foods. Do that. That's what I want you yeah. to go do, but that right away will start to make an impact. If you are struggling with hitting every night before you go to bed, if you did not hit that 135, you got to finish the night with a, a protein. And do something light like a... The bone broth, Paleo Valley drink. It's so easy to drink it. It's like so light that you could do a 40 grams of protein of that and just drink it super fast. Like find something like that at night that if you don't hit it, you at least do that. And consistently her adding 40 grams more protein a day is going to make it. Now, the reason, the reason why I said stick to whole natural foods is because you will get the appetite suppressing effect from the whole natural protein that you won't get from a protein shake. So if the goal is build muscle and lose fat without having to cut calories or track, simply eating that protein and eating it first from whole natural foods will automatically naturally bring your calories down to a point where you'll get leaner. So it, it satisfies everything. So if you just do that, if you just figure out what that 45 grams of protein looks like for those three meals, eat it first, the rest will take care of itself. And I, I'm literally not, I, I can't stress this enough. If you do this for 30 days, you're going to be like, Oh, okay, this is like magic. Like this, especially because you've been working out consistently four days a week. It's like this, um, will, this will be. You have no idea the rev limiter you put on yourself uh, by not doing that. Julie, are you uh, are, are you on Facebook? Yep. Can I put you in the private forum? Okay. I'm gonna Appreciate I'm it. gonna I'm yeah. gonna put you I'm gonna put you in there, and then I want you to check in with me once a month. Okay, just let me know how it's going. If, if you're doing well, if you're being challenged, what are the challenges? Just give us an update on what's going on. And, and the, for now, the goal is follow the program you're doing. That's fine. You're fine on that route. And just hit protein yeah. every single day. And if you're, if you at nighttime, if you look at, you, and you look back and you're doing the math and you go, oh man, I'm only at 60 grams or not. If you're under the 135, have a protein shake at the bare minimum. At least it, do that. Is there a reason why you said that right now you can really focus on yourself? Have you had some big life changes recently? No, it's just my kids are now teens and they have their own lives and own cars. Yeah. So I don't have to be let's the mom this. on let's, the go. Let's do this. Yeah. Operation yep. Sexy as Fuck Mom. Let's Mama go. <laughs> let's go. Yeah. yeah. Let's go. Stacy's mom. Let's go. <laughs> yes. Got it going let's on. go. I get, love in, it. get in the forum and and check in with me and then we'll we'll help guide you through this process. But I'm yep. telling you right now, that's gonna be massive if we do that. Yep. If you just give me 30 days. I think you'll, you'll notice feel the and see yeah. and notice a difference. Yeah, you will. Okay. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. You got All it. Right, Thanks for calling in, Julia. We'll Thanks see you for the support. Forum. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. You got it. If people only knew how big of a difference that protein intake made. By the way, that's a very common client that I would 100%. Uh -huh. And listen. A lot of eggs. Uh, let's. I know. She yeah, had, I knew. Let's like pretend four. six eggs. Let's pretend nobody yeah. eats six eggs. Yeah, three. Yeah, yeah. yeah but okay. Let's it's just probably three. Dude. Let's pretend it's six. Okay, forty grams of protein at best. She's having for breakfast, and then let's say she has a massive steak. Another forty grams yeah. at dinner. Eighty. Yeah. yeah, at best. I would bet money. It's she's averaging about seventy grams of protein or less. Yeah, or yeah. less. And that person. And this is why too. I said add the shake because, and this is the type of person who thinks like a shake all of a sudden is, is miraculous because mm -hmm. they're so grossly under consuming protein. You bump them by 30 to 40 grams, which is by the way, is like doubling this person's yeah. protein intake. And they know they all, all of a sudden the body goes, thank God finally yeah, got what yeah, I needed. Yeah. And it starts building some muscle blow their mind. Yep. Please do it. Julia. Our next caller is Josh from Canada. What's up, Josh? How can we help you? What's up? Hey guys, big fan of the show. So thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. All right. Uh, so I've been active my whole life, but coming out of COVID, I was probably in the worst shape of my life. I'm 45 years old, five foot seven. At the time, I was 180 pounds. Uh, the in-body in -body scanner said I was at 30% body fat. I started going to F45 classes, quickly got hooked, getting up to six classes a week. Uh, over the course of a year, the in-body scanner said I went from 180 pounds down to about 154 
my body fat went from about 30 to 17 percent. Uh, during this time, my maintenance calories were around 2350, and I was eating uh, 2000 calories a day to be in a deficit. Uh, so I didn't add obviously very much muscle during this time, but I think I looked the best I've ever looked. However, I had many symptoms of overtraining and under eating, had low libido, sore everywhere, several minor muscle strains, uh, especially my forearms. Uh, my testosterone levels were already low, but after a year of overtraining and under eating, they were even lower. So at that time, I started to work with a naturopath. I started HRT, which is um, 100 milligrams a week of testosterone, two IUs, uh, growth hormone daily. Uh, my mood, libido, energy improved. I switched from eating in the deficit to eating in a surplus. I aimed for 3,000 calories, and I got between 150 and 200 grams of protein, mostly from whole foods. I love protein bars, but other than that, mostly whole foods. Um, I also stopped going to F45 and started strictly weight training, doing push-pull legs five times a week. Uh, I did two DEXA scans 12 months apart. And after the 12 months of strength training, it said I gained 11 pounds of muscle and a pound and a half of body fat. So at 45, I thought that was pretty awesome. To, That's great. That's awesome. Yeah. Results. Yeah, that is. Uh, the, the problem is I attached two photos, one at 155 pounds and one more kind of currently at 170 pounds. The problem for me is I think I look worse. Uh, maybe it's the water retention from the TRT. My definition is gone. I kind of feel like I just look fatter. And unfortunately, a lot of the nagging injuries are still there. So I kind of thought like hopping on TRT was like cheat code to getting jacked after 40. Uh, <laughs> but that's not been the case for me. Uh, so since this December, I switched to training three times a week to allow my injuries to heal. I'm working with a physiotherapist. Uh, my muscle strains are definitely improving, but I really don't know where to go from here. I'm currently at 173 pounds. Uh, I'm kind of wondering if I bulked too far. Should I now stay at maintenance calories? Should I go back into a deficit? You know, how should I adjust my, Bro, how you, should I adjust my training? We're, lo we're looking right now at the photos. First of all, you did great and you definitely put on some muscle. Yeah, you look you way better. You, so, you literally are, the only difference is, is I mean, you're eating 3,000 calories. You were on a 2,000, you need a thousand more calories and you reduced the yeah. volume of training. And and you didn't put on a crazy you, amount of body fat. You, I gotta I gotta ask you. I gotta pose something for you here for a second. Sure. Okay. Would you rather? Because because here's the thing. I'm gonna tell you right now. Your the way that you are perceiving the way you look is a bit skewed and distorted. And and here's how I know. Not because your opinion's wrong. I disagree with you. I think you look better the second one. But that's not the point. The point is you feel better, higher libido, more energy. And you're upset because you feel like you look better, look worse. And so for you, it's almost as if you would look, you would trade looking better for having worse health mm -hmm. than having better health. And then in your perception, looking worse. So yeah, yeah, that's true. Right. So this, the issue here is a lot bigger and I'll give you advice on what I think you could do, but it's not going to help you until you address that problem right there because you're healthier, you feel better, libido's back, energy's back but you can't get around the fact that you're upset because of how you look and it doesn't look the way that you want. And I'm going to tell you something right now. You are never going to look the way you want if you don't solve that problem, or at least you're not going to get the happiness or what you think you're going to get from the way you look uh, because of that perception. We have to change that if we're ever going to solve this problem permanently. Now I can give you advice on what I think, and it's pretty easy. Just 3000 calories. You built a lot of muscle reduce your cut your calories a little bit go to, go to 2500 go to 2500 uh as far as the injuries are concerned i'd reduce the volume a little bit maybe work on some mobility that should help take care uh, of the problem you're probably still overtraining a little bit um even though you built some muscle and stuff yeah we should put him on one of our programs he's been doing a five day a oh, week yeah, type of deal let's put definitely. him on something else that i think will also i'll put you on maps anabolic. anabolic yeah i'll put you on maps anabolic yeah do the three day a week version with the trigger sessions do you have that program so I, I purchased the 40 plus. Oh, um, that's fine. Oh, good. No, that's no, that's good. No, that's you're good. good. But that's I can't, I kind of, I would love to do anabolic because to be honest, like 
I know, again, it's just my own perception, but to go from like a push pull legs kind of routine to the 40 plus in my mind, I was like, oh, I'm going backwards. You no, know? Like no, I, I'm no. not, I'm not doing those big, big lifts that I, that I want to be doing. No, you're still doing uh, big lifts in the 40 plus. The only thing we take into consideration are things like potential joint pain and stuff like which, that. Which by but, the way, you mentioned. Yeah. So, so you're yeah. not, you're not taking a yeah, step back. If that. you train appropriately, you're taking a step forward. Yeah. You're going to get better results. Yeah, yeah. Did you just start it? How far in are you? Yeah. I just started. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. I, I would stick him with that, bro. Dude, just let him yeah. stay with that. You're going to kick ass. Started, I'll dude. send you maps anabolic anyway. After 40 plus, you can follow anabolic. Yeah. But yeah. it's not good. But I think with what you said, especially with the nagging kind of pain, maps 40 plus is going to be the way to go. L L and and I'll tell you this, dude. You can cut your calories, but you really got to examine this, how you, this attachment to. I'm going to tell you right now, okay, objectively, I'm a trainer. I know what you know healthy looks like to extend or whatever. You look better in the second picture, but that's not the point. The point is you're more upset looking in a way you don't like, even though all the health signs are better. And you don't want to be in that place because what will happen is you'll consistently sacrifice your health in the pursuit of something that you'll never accomplish, which is being happy with the way you look. And through that, through sacrificing your health, you'll – objectively look worse, 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 worse. So it's like a lose, lose situation. So I'm going to, I'm going to tell you what I want you to do. And then I'm going to tell you what you're going to be, what, what you're going to be challenged with. And then just, just, you know, trust the process here. You, you're going to go down to 2,500 calories. Now what's going to happen is you're not going to lean out fast. You're going to, cause you're feeding yourself a good amount of calories still that it's going to be a nice, slow, gradual process. And keep the, keep the so protein. Don't, so what I don't want you to do is cut down to 2,500 and go, I'm not seeing results fast enough. And then the temptation to want to cut harder or add cardio or do shit like that. Allow allow the good training and the, the proper amount of volume, the recovery and all that, and feeding the body properly to just let it do its work. And you're gonna and you're gonna land somewhere right between those two pictures, in my opinion. You're not gonna you're not gonna look so gaunt or like shredded like you were in the other one. You're gonna be a little bit, which is gonna be good. You're gonna be more muscle. You're gonna have more muscle, but you're gonna lean out a little bit. A lot of what you're feeling right now is you're eating three thousand calories. You're definitely holding more water. Testosterone does that also, but you you're, you're healthier. All the signs are saying you needed to be fed. You needed to back off all that volume. We need to probably scale back on the volume even more. That's why forty maps forty is gonna be great for you. And then just cut your calories to 2,500 to 2,800 in that little range. Just stay there and just make good choices. You know, uh, I, I don't know if you're like a, it fits your macros type of person or you're trying to eat whole foods, but do your best to eat whole foods and target that 2,500 to 2,800 calories and let the programming do the rest. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Okay. And give I, me I, I, I was just going to say, I totally do that, right? Like yes. if, I, if I go to 2,500 calories, which is maintenance, and then, you know, a month later, I don't see any differences. Yes. I'm like, shit, I got to, I got to uh, cut. Uh, I got to cut. I more. know that. No, with I, a, know, I know that. Early, with yeah. a good, a good program oh. and at 2,500 calories, you'll probably build and lose. That's, you'll probably build muscle and lose body. It's going to be a time. beautiful sweet spot for yeah. you. And, and, and you should feel satisfied calorie wise. You shouldn't feel like you're starving. You shouldn't feel like you're overstuffing. It's going to be a nice spot for you. Just give me through the program, Josh. Follow the program, eat that way, okay. trust the process. Then afterwards, then we can assess where you're at, how you feel, and what you want to do from there. But uh, you're, you're heading the right direction, and I think you're going to be really happy with the end result if you trust the process. Cool. Thanks, guys. All right, Josh. You got it, man. Thanks yeah. for calling in. Good luck, man. Thank you. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, you hear that sometimes. Uh, I've experienced that, too, where you look at a picture like, oh, man, I look shredded. And then you, what you do is you think back and be like, oh, I felt like crap. Like, you know, it's like, yeah. you know, he, he wanted to trade health for how he looked. And it's when I posed it to him, you can, you can see, he's like, oh shit, you're right. Like that's not necessarily a good trade. And then eventually what people don't realize is even if you stay there, if he stayed in that first picture and just continued to ignore his body signs, his body would deteriorate and he would not get the look that he was looking for. Well, I, I, want, I want to address yeah. the, the, uh, what he said about joint pain and feeling a little puffy and stuff. What he did was in this, uh, this is his personality, which is why I knew how to, what advice to give him is he's an overcorrector. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he went from being super lean. Okay. Now I need to go the other. And so he overcorrected and bulked harder and faster than he needed to. And he still is doing too much volume. So reducing his volume, feeding his body more appropriately, and then letting it, like he's going to feel oh, he'll better. Feel amazing. Yeah, inflammation will come down. He won't feel look, feel and look puffy to him. To him, and he's going to he'll be doing less work. It's he'll, it just it'll be a psychological piece. Can he be disciplined 
to just trust the process totally. and know that you're not going to see major week to week changes, but you should feel good. You should mm -hmm. feel strong in the gym. You should feel the joint pain starting to come down, getting stronger, feeling fed. Like that's how you should feel. Totally. Look, if you like mind pump, find our body fat loss guide. It's free at mindpumpfree.com. Teaches you how to lose body fat, and it's totally free. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. I'm on Instagram at Mind Pump to Stefano, and Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam.